Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to get started with sculpting in Blender. <clears throat> and this is going to let you be really creative. It's a lot like sculpting with clay. Um, I'm going to show you the features you can use to um, make it a bit even easier to do that. So when you open Blender 2.8 for the first time, this is what you're going to see. Just this default cube with a camera and a light setup. You're just going to go ahead, select all of those, drag select those and delete them. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go up here to add and then you're going to go to mesh UV sphere. And if you hit F, it zooms in on the selected object. And now what you're going to do is you are going to go over here <clears throat> to where it says object mode and you're going to go to sculpt mode. Now when you go to sculpt mode, the uh, interface is going to change and it's going to become more suited for um, sculpting on this object you made here. Try and imagine the sphere as a hunk of clay that uh, you can start doing various things with using these tools here. So you can see that there's a variety of different ways you can affect and alter geometry here. Uh, so you can see if I choose the clay strips uh, button, it's going to kind of start adding these vertical strips to the object. Um, if I use the crease tool, it's going to start putting a bit of a crease into the object. Uh, but one thing you may be noticing is that um, this object doesn't have that much geometry, that many faces, so when I try and affect it, um, it's there's not a lot of geometry to create shape there. So what you're going to want to do, there's a neat trick here, is you're going to go here uh, and you'll see this tiny arrow right here. If you click it, it's going to open up the toolbox for you. What you want to do is you want to go to tool and you can see it has all the different tools you would need uh, for sculpting. And you're going to want to click this one right here that says DIN Topo. When you click it, it's going to give you this warning message um, that it doesn't preserve any of the data. That's OK. Just hit OK. And now, essentially what DIN Topo is doing is it's adding dynamic topology. So you can see now when I start using clay strips here, it's actually adding a lot more geometry than this object has. So it's adding geometry and it's giving me more uh, free range to be more creative with the shape. Obviously you have to consider that this is increasing the poly count of the object. But if you're just working to do a render, uh, if this isn't anything related to a video game, uh, that's not as big a deal um, if you're just going for pure detail. And the cool thing about uh, Dintopo is that the further away from the object you are, it alters how much geometry it's putting in. So you can see as I get closer, it's actually more detailed than if I uh, scroll back and do it again. It's a little less detailed. So it's a nice way to kind of control the detail um, on your object. If you hold shift, you can basically go and smooth everything out. Um, if you want to decrease how intense the smoothing is, you can click the smoothing button right here and crank that down to about 0.2. Um, that's usually where I like it. And you'll also notice that as I'm sculpting, uh, there's symmetry to it. You can see that there is a symmetry option here. Uh, the only one I have turned on is to mirror um, on the x-axis. As you can see right up here, these are the three axes um, that Blender uses, x, y, and z. Uh, but if we were sculpting a face, uh, we would only want the x-axis to be mirrored because that's how faces are, they're symmetrical. So let me add a new sphere here, go into Dintopo, and kind of just start um, making a basic face shape, kind of give you an idea of what this workflow looks like. So you got this right here. <clears throat> start carving away the areas the eyes would go might actually be a little too big let's try a little smaller and 
We can add a little bit for the nose. <clears throat> and you can see I'm just kind of going through and just carving out the basic details of this face right here. Again, it's the uh, Din Topo tool is coming in really handy because even though this sphere originally didn't have too much geometry, um, it's giving me a lot of op um, option to uh, add detail to this. So one thing I'm gonna do now is select the mask tool and mask just this area off and then hit Control i to invert the mask. And if I hit G, it's going to bring me to the Grab tool, and only this being affected, I'm going to drag it down uh, to be the neck. And now if I hit <clears throat> Control m that will uh, remove the mask, and I can once again start working on all of this model. So I'm just going to start uh, filling out this area around the neck. You can see, you know, the basic uh, shape of the face is starting to come along. And uh, yeah, obviously if you want <clears throat> a very detailed face, um, it's going to take a bit more time than just uh, <clears throat> kind of tossing virtual clay together like I am right now. Um, but uh, I just want this to be kind of a bit of a introduction to um, the tools that are available in Blender that you can use um, and that you can start getting some pretty cool stuff pretty quickly if you know what you're doing. And yeah, I hope that this gives you some ideas. Uh, to start a project and we will try and have some other tutorials up that go more into detail about how to get really impressive results.